Hey, we are on to chapter three in Guinea Dog 2 here. I pity celebrities. Remember he had just gotten to school and all of his classmates kind of bombarded him because they had heard about Fido because his friend uh, Murphy was telling stories while he was at home. Especially the ones with broken bones. Olympic athletes, Super Bowl quarterbacks. Everywhere they go, people mob them, even when they have casts and crushes. I can relate. I've never had a harder time getting into the school building. Murphy holds my arm and guides me through the crowd, yelling at them to move away. You can tell he's enjoying himself. He's getting the attention he lives for. And I think he likes that I'm getting some too. I don't know why. I don't like the attention, which includes being rammed by some kid and twirling around like a ballerina on the toe of my medical boot. A ballerina with crutches. Not so graceful. Actually, that would be one of the few ballets I think I wouldn't mind seeing. Thankfully, Murphy catches me before the twirling results in a crash landing. I glare up at him as he holds me in his heroic arms. I'm not supposed to be doing pirouettes. I'm supposed to be staying off my bad foot. And it's his need for attention that has gotten me into this situation. Your dad asked me to remind you to stay off that foot, he says, pretending to be dead serious. So stay off it. He turns to the crowd. You guys have got to give this guy a break. Oh, I forgot. He already has one. The crowd laughs. I don't understand why. Puns aren't funny. Seriously, I ask. This is the time for jokes. He lifts my arm, tucks his head under my armpit, then stands up straight, supporting me. Man down, he says. Clear a path. I've got to get this man to safety. Step back. Man down. Step back. They obey him again. For a few seconds at least, then swoop back in for another attack. Dimitri is in front. I want a guinea dog, dude, he says through gritting teeth. Get me one. I'll pay. Name your price. He sounds annoyed. He must be frustrated that he can't get what he wants when he wants it. If Murph is my best friend and today he's testing it, Dimitri is my worst. He came to my house a couple of times when I was laid up after he found out about Fido. He's the kind of kid who has to have the coolest stuff in the world, so naturally, he wanted Fido for his collection. I wouldn't let him have her, of course, so he got mad and said that Fido couldn't be the only guinea dog in the world. He said she wasn't special, which made me mad. Couldn't find one online, huh? I ask. He seethes, which is no big deal. The guy's a natural-born seether, like a car radiator on a scorching summer day. You never know when he's going to boil over. No time to chat, Murph grunts at him. Got to get this man out of harm's way. Dimitri boils over, but Murph keeps us moving on toward the cafeteria's double doors. Students are allowed to hang out in the cafeteria before school, but usually I spend the time on the playground. Murphy never arrives before school. He's always late. So this will make a nice change for both of us. If we ever get there. I've never wanted to sit down more in my life. I don't like being crowded. I don't like being knocked down. What's the matter with these people anyway? Can't they say I'm on crutches? I also don't like having so many people prying into my private life and my pet's private life. I don't get into their faces and ask tons of questions about their pets. They act as if Fido were some sort of freak. She isn't. Well, maybe she is, but who isn't? Chapter four. Speaking of freaks, here comes Lorena. She's the weird, weird girl in my class who dresses like an American girl doll, long flowery dresses, belts, vests, hats with fake flowers. She was with my family and me the day I broke my foot. My mom invited her to the river completely without my permission. When I was laid up, Lorena kept dropping by our house uninvited to see how I was. She usually brought along her rodent pets, her hamster and chinchilla, to play with Fido. Fido snarled and chased them under the furniture. She doesn't like rodents, other than herself. Will you leave him alone, Lorena yells. What is the matter with you? He has a broken foot. Get away from him. She runs towards us, her blonde curls bouncing and her face all red. The crowd backs off a bit, like they're scared of her, even the boys. Are you crazy or what? She asks, shoving Dimitri, who rushed in when the others stepped back. He's on crutches for crying out loud. This is awkward. I mean, I appreciate her taking my side, but Lorena is a girl after all. Dimitri loves it. See, you got a girl to fight your battles for you, he snarls. Battles, I ask. I'm just trying to get into the building without breaking another bone or two. And I just want a guinea dog, Dimitri says back. Well, you're out of luck, Lorena says. Now go kick a kickball or something and leave this poor boy alone. Dimitri and a couple of the other boys giggle. Okay, poor baby. 
Dimitri says, stepping away backwards. We'll leave you alone, you poor, poor boy. A few of the boys follow him toward the playground, pointing back at me and laughing all the way. Thanks so much, I say to Lorena. You're welcome, she says, not getting my tone. What a bunch of lunkheads. I mean, really. They are lunkheads, Murph, pi Murph pipes in. They're heads, lunks. What's a lunk, I ask. He shrugs. Not completely sure. Stop fooling around, Murph, and let's get him inside, Lorena says. What are you doing here so early anyway? You're never on time for school. Murphy checks his wrist. He doesn't wear a watch. Why? I'm early. I've got to get home. He lets go of me suddenly, and I start to tumble to the ground. Lorena catches me. Get back here, I yell. You got me into this, and you're going to stay by my side all day, like a loyal, trustworthy friend. Of course I am, he says, and he slaps his forehead. What was I thinking? You must resume your education before your brain starts going all soft and mushy. Just help me, will ya? I glare at him trying to open his eyes to the fact that Lorena is cradling me in her arms. He pulls me up by my arm and hooks it over his shoulder. Please, miss, he says to Lorena, grab hold of his other arm and let's get him into the building. Stat. That means at once. I know what stat means, Lorena says. She takes my other arm and my crutches drop to the ground. I lose my balance and fall backward, dragging the two of them with me. As we lie on the sidewalk with everyone standing above us, laughing uncontrollably, I spot an animal galloping across the lawn. It's small and furry, and its tongue is hanging out of its mouth. It's not a cat. It's not a dog. It has a mohawk, a white one. Uh-oh. Who do you think's running across the lawn? Chapter five. I'm almost positive guinea pigs can't open car doors. I doubt they could survive a leap out of the window of a moving vehicle either. But when it comes to Fido, anything is possible. Fido, I call out and immediately regret it. This bunch is so worked up, they might stampede her. It's the guinea dog, they start yelling. It's the guinea dog. Fido stops in her tracks and makes a small, scared yelp. I don't think she likes being targeted by a mob either. The crowd rushes toward her. She does a 180 and flees as fast as she can. Save her, I yell at Murphy and Lorena, who have gotten to their feet. Save Fido. Lorena is first out of the gate with Murphy right behind her. I work on getting up, which is not easy. Stupid crutches, stupid boot, stupid, stupid foot. Don't chase her into the street, I scream, because that's exactly where Fido is heading. I shudder, thinking she might run in front of a school bus. Circle around her, Murph, head her off. I'm on it, Murphy answers and picks up speed. He's faster than Fido and should be able to get in front of her. Unfortunately, the other kids got a head start, and some of them are pretty fast, especially Dimitri. I think he's the fastest, probably because he wants Fido the most. I wonder what he'll do if he catches her. Would he give her back to me? Lorena, I yell. Stop, Dimitri. I feel so powerless. A herd of kids bearing down on Fido, and I can't do anything but yell. It's awful. Lorena flashes a thumbs up, then turns and runs straight at Dimitri, her long dress flapping like a flag in the wind. Surprisingly, she's faster than he is, probably because she doesn't like him and because she really likes Fido. When she gets close enough, she takes a dive at his knees and brings him down. Boy, is he mad, but Lorena doesn't hang around to listen to him tell her off. She bounces to her feet and races after Fido. She doesn't even brush the dried leaves and twigs out of her long hair. Murphy heads Fido off at the row of hedges that mark the edge of the school grounds. He kneels down. Here, girl, he says in a kind voice. He crouches and reaches out a hand. Here, Fido, come on, come here, girl. Fido streaks straight to him and straight between his legs, straight into the bushes, and she's gone. Her pursuers stop their pursuit and groan. You're not allowed to leave school grounds once you're on them. Nice catch, I say to Murphy as I hobble over. Sorry, he says. I forgot she's so small. How'd she get away from your dad? I have no idea, but she's good at getting away. I remember when she sneaked into your backpack, Lorena says, walking over. That was some tackle, Murph says. Considered going out for the Pittsburgh Steelers? I have to find Fido. 
you can't leave school grounds. And if you find her, you can't bring her into the school building. Pet rodents aren't allowed in school, she scowls, which is a totally unfair rule, by the way. I'll help you find her, Murph says, even if it makes me late for class. Gee, thanks for making the supreme sacrifice. I'll help too, Lorena says. This is surprising. Lorena is Miss Perfect Attendance. But then she's also the rodent queen. Thanks, I say, then cut my hands around my mouth and call. Fido, come, come, Fido. She pokes her head out of the hedge. She pants a few times. She runs at me. She's always been such an obedient dog. Uh, pig, um, rodent. Cool, someone says. Did you see that? Asked someone else. It came when he called. It really is trained, just like a dog. 50 bucks for it, Dimitri says. She's not for sale, Dimitri, Lorena says. Get it through your thick skull. Still got her fighting your battles, huh, Rufus? What, are you guys married or something? He looks ready to boil over again. The bell rings. The crowd heads inside. Fido trots up to me. I bend over to pet her and fall on my head. Oh, crutches, I growl. You'd think an adult would be able to hold on to one fat little rodent, wouldn't you? Rufus, a voice calls out. It's dad. Did he hear me? He's getting out of his car, which he's parked in the street diagonally over two parking spaces. Not very dad-like. He runs over without shutting his door. Also not very dad-like. Have you seen Fido? He asks out of breath. He hasn't exercised enough. Mom always tells him that. Fido pops out from behind me. Fortunately, I didn't crush her when I fell. Yeah, I say. She jumped out the window when I stopped at an intersection, Dad says, as if it's the most shockingly rude thing he'd ever seen. I got out to catch her. She just took off. He stops and holds his side like he has a cramp. I ran after her. So I see. Well, I'll take her. You three should get inside. I heard the bell. School's starting. You sure you won't let her get away again? I ask. He gives me the stony stare. Okay, I say, Fido, go to dad. She whimpers. You heard me. Go. She hangs her head and trudges over to dad. He scoops her up. Then he looks at us, each of us, up and down. What happened to you three? He asks. I guess we do look a little scruffy. Dirt, grass stains, messed up hair with dried leaves and twigs in it. Touch football, Murph says with a smile. Lorena tackled Dimitri. Lorena smiles too. On that foot, Dad says, pointing at my boot. He's joking, I say. We all fell down. We were playing ring around the rosy, Murph says. Funny, Dad says, turning to leave. Now get to class. It isn't until we're inside that we discover Fido had gotten away from him again. All my classmates are pressed up to the windows laughing as my dad chases her around the playground, hunched over, his hands out trying to catch her. He stumbles a couple times. He runs into a swing and gets tangled in it. He bonks his head on the slide. I know I should go out there and help him, but what I really want to do is run away and hide. Chapter six for next time. A person can't run away with a broken foot. See you next time.